Today we're going to talk about electric circuits. These are the circuits that are at the heart of your electronic devices, some of them with billions of circuit elements, resistors, capacitors, transistors. We won't talk uh, much about transistors, but we will talk about capacitors and resistors in this chapter. How they go together, what their function is in a circuit, and, and what some of these circuits are, uh, are used for in applications for, for various circuits. Um, lots of concepts, Ohm's law, parallel and series uh, wiring, RC circuits, uh, the very last section in the book will be the subject of, of your lab, one of your lab experiments. Kirchhoff's rules, which are at the heart at the development of um, integrated circuits that have um, advanced so much in recent years. So first section is to think about the electromotive force. Um, that's a fancy name for the voltage of a battery. But we're going to make distinctions between what's known as the terminal voltage and the electromotive force or the EMF of a battery, which are slightly different depending on the current. We'll define the electric current and we'll define um, direct current and alternating current. So an electric circuit, an energy source, and an energy consuming device are connected by conducting wires. So a source in this case would be a battery pack and then um, el electric charges move through the wires that power the device. And within a battery there are chemical reactions and we're not going to get into those much. Well in fact we're not going to get into them at all. But this chemical reaction transfers electrons from one terminal to the other terminal of the battery. You always have two terminals, a positive and a negative. And, and this transfer of charge from one side to the other leads to what's known as the electromotive force. The electromotive force of a battery, called the EMF, is the potential difference across the terminals of the battery when there's no current through the battery. So if you were to take a voltmeter, and we'll talk a little bit about this later, a voltmeter measures the voltage across a battery, then that terminal uh, voltage, would, if there's no current in the battery, then that terminal voltage is equal to the electromotive force of the battery. So for a car battery, it would be um, 12 volts. And um, for regular batteries, uh, one and a half volts between the terminals. Here's a demonstration of an assortment of batteries. Here are some batteries. All of these are alkaline batteries. All of them are one and a half volts uh, per, per battery. This is a AAA, a C, a D. This uh, is not one and a half volts, it's a nine volt battery. And how do you get nine volts? The alkaline cells are naturally, nominally one and a half volts. And so how you get nine volts is you, a nine volt battery, is you build, is you put um, one, two, three, four, five, six, one and a half volt cells inside of this um, shape. And you're going to put them in series with each other so that their voltages add. So effectively what you have to create this 9 volt battery is you put these six batteries end to end to add up to 9 volts. That's batteries. Okay, let's define the electric current. The current is the amount of charge per unit time, that's a charge divided by a time, and that's the, the bit to remember, charge over a time, that passes through a surface that's perpendicular to the motion of the charges. So if we have some charges that are moving and they're passing through a surface, 
then the amount of charge passing through that surface divided by the time is called the current. The direction of the current is the direction of the motion of positive charge carriers. So we've talked about the difference between positive charge and negative charge. Protons are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged. And the direction of the current is the direction of motion of positive charge carriers. So if that charge carrier were positive and it were moving to the right, then the current would be to the right. If, however, the charge carriers are negative, let's say we have a charge carrier that's an electron and it's moving to the left. Then that electron is in the direction opposite the, the conventional current. So in this case, the current would still be to the right opposite the direction of the motion of the electron, which is a negative charge carrier. So that's what this statement says here. It's the direction of motion of positive charge carriers, which is opposite. The current is opposite to the direction of negative charge carriers. All right, so equation-wise, the current is denoted by the letter I. It's a charge divided by time. So that delta Q means the amount of charge passing through that surface area. Delta T is the elapsed time. And that's uh, the definition of current. The units of current would be the units of charge, which are coulombs, divided by the units of time, which are seconds. And a, a coulomb divided by a second is defined as the ampere or often called the amp. And you say, well, is this the same as, you know, in my house I have 20 amp circuits and 15 amp circuits? And I say, yes, it is. That's what uh, it's defined as. So an amp that you've heard of before, I imagine, is a charge divided by time, coulomb per second. And we've talked about this. Um, so, we will use a, a shorthand notation to denote a battery. So if this is a battery, <clears throat> there's a long line, this long, thin blue line on the left side of the battery, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is supposed to denote the positive terminal, terminal of the battery. <clears throat> and this fat, short line on the right side of the battery denotes the negative terminal of the battery. So, if this is a positive terminal, and you ask about the direction of the current produced by that battery, here's the rule of thumb. The current is in the direction of motion of positive charge carriers. Well, let's put a positive charge right here and ask what happens to it when it's near this positive terminal. Simplest way to think about it is these two positive charges, like charges, repel. So that charge is going to move in this direction, and that is the indi that indicates the direction of motion or the direction of the current. Now, normally in circuits, uh, in well, not normally, but always in electronic circuits, you have metal conductors that conduct not protons but electrons through the the circuit. So if the current is in this direction, then the actual direction of motion of the electrons is what? you say opposite. So this electron is actually going to be going this way, attracted to that positive terminal of the battery. That's the way that works. So which one of the following situations uh, gives a, convection, a conventional electric current that is due north? So if we have um, north-south, protons in a beam that are moving due south. So protons are positively charged and they move this way. Well, what direction uh, of a current would this produce? And you say, well, current's in the direction of motion of positive charge carriers. So that would have produced a current toward the south. So that can't possibly be right. A water molecule is moving due north. The water molecule actually doesn't have any charge. So it's not gonna produce any current. 
So that one's out. Electrons in a beam that are moving due south. So here's an electron. It's a negative charge. It's moving south. <coughs> That's its velocity. What's the direction of the current with an electron moving due south? And you say, well, it's in the direction of motion opposite. It's, in the, it's opposite the direction of motion of the negative charge carriers. So that would indeed produce a current directed toward the north. Electrons in a wire connected to a battery are moving from south to north. So the electrons are moving in the wrong direction for that one. The electrons have to be moving south in order for there to be a current that's directed toward the north. Let's define direct current and alternating current. For direct current, often abbreviated DC, DC circuits, charges move in the same direction at all times. And in fact, they move with the same speed at all times as well. For alternating current, charges move first one way and then the next. So for an alternating current, they move to the right for a while, then they move to the left, and they move back to the right again, and so on. Uh, an example, the current in a 3-volt battery of a pocket calculator is 0 0.17 milliamps. So it says that the current perfect. In one hour of operation, how much charge flows in the circuit and how much energy does a battery deliver to the calculator circuit? Well, let's figure out the charge first. This current is what over what? And you say charge over time. So if we're actually interested in uh, the energy, then we're first going to need to get the amount of charge. And the charge, we can solve this equation for the charge by multiplying both sides by delta T. And that's what we have here. So this will give us the charge. So that's, uh, that's the current through the circuit. The time is one hour, we've been told. And one hour is 60 minutes. And in each minute, there's 60 seconds. And 60 times 60 is 3,600. 3, so we get that there's uh, 0 0.61 coulombs of charge that move through that circuit in one hour. And the voltage is an energy per charge. If you um, remember that the voltage can be written as a um, joule per coulomb. And And then we have a charge times this voltage will give us an actual amount of energy that passes through. So um, here's, a, here, here's, here's to help you remember, in chapter 19 we talked about the potential difference being a change in the electric potential energy measured in joules divided by charge. So that's where this comes from. The, um, this voltage is really an energy divided by a charge. Perfect. That gives the energy. And um, 